the angel scroll of Yeshua ben Padia. What is the angel scroll written by Yeshua ben Padia in Anglatane on the eastern shore of the Dead Sea roughly 2,000 years ago? To answer this question, we must travel back in our minds roughly 8,000 years into the past, journeying back to the time of the Genesis patriarch and biblical prophet Enoch. Enoch had two names. One was Enoch, one Enos. Why? Because he was the son of a Nephilim and a mortal human. The Nephilim were descendants of Cain, while the mortal humans were descendants of Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve. Enos was his given name, however his regnal title as ruler of the city that bore his name was Enoch. Enoch was a city built to the east of Eden, and the angel with the flaming sword guarding against re-entry into it could be seen from the city, and beyond that the tree of life now forbidden the descendants of Adam and Eve. It was during the lifetime of Enoch that Adam and Eve died. It was a young Enoch who assisted in their funerary rites. According to the apocryphal books attributed to have been written by Enoch, he had a dream that he interpreted to be an omen of a great flood, and that it was Enoch who warned his grandson Noah to prepare for this event by building an ark. While Enoch was digging the nine chambers deep grave that would serve as the family tombs for the generations from Adam through Enoch's own son Methuselah, he was murdered by three of his Nephilim workers, Tubal Cain, Jabal, and Jubal. The event occurred within the tomb during its construction. And so the legend goes Enoch was translated into heaven, for Enoch walked with God, and God took Enoch, and he was not. In later legends, Enoch is referred to as the Metatron, or voice of God, who sits to the right of the throne chariot in place of the fallen Lucifer. The book of Enoch that describes his dream was preserved from the time of Noah until the times of King David and Prince Solomon. At that time, the book was given as a gift by Prince Solomon to the Queen of Sheba, Ethiopia. The Ethiopians who preserved the book of Enoch intact until now also bear records of his son born to the Queen of Sheba by Prince Solomon. This book is called Kebernegast or the Book of Kings. This book records that this bastard son of Prince Solomon and the Queen of Sheba grew up to steal the Ark of the Covenant from within his father's temple. At this point, the history of Freemasonic rituals assert Hiram Abiff, a Tyrian, was the great architect of Solomon's temple, and he was killed by three of his workers named Jubilo, Jubela, and Jubelum. According to the medieval grimoires called the Greater and the Lesser Keys of King Solomon, there were 72 workers on the temple who were compelled to work by magic involving the seven planets. Solomon wore a ring inscribed with a symbol and a word to command his magic. Many speculate the symbol of this ring was a hexagram star and that this word was an anagram. In the lesser keys of Solomon Grimoire, a seal is given for the symbol surrounded by a sigil or name. The letters spell out the anagram for Hiram Tyrion, widow's son, sendeth to King Solomon. The further lessons of Freemasonry explain how the tomb of Enoch was found while laying foundations for the Temple of Solomon. There are three books of Enoch, and three versions have been found in different locations. By far the oldest and most complex is that preserved by the Ethiopian Jewish descendants of Menelik, son of Solomon and Sheba. It contains all three books of Enoch in perfect form to this day. The second source for the book of Enoch comes from a land quite distant in the ancient world from Ethiopia, 
A translation in Slavic emerged from southeastern Europe near the Black Sea that contained only a truncated text of the second book by Enoch. The third source for the Book of Enoch are versions in Hebrew and Greek recovered in jars preserved by salt evaporation in the caves near Qumran on the west coast of the Dead Sea. These jars were placed there 2,000 years ago, contemporary to the New Testament era and the events described there in the life of Jesus. According to the Babylonian Talmud, the Jerusalem Sanhedrin convened to try a man named Yeshu. This legal text describes Yeshu being called Bar Pandera, meaning son of a panther, a division in the Roman army, and states in its records Yeshu was the son of a Roman soldier. The trial records compare Yeshu Bar Pandera to an earlier man also named Yeshu. This earlier Yeshu, according to the Talmud, had snuck into an Egyptian temple and secretly smuggled out a small parchment containing the secret name of their god and whom had then used this name to work magical acts. The Roman historian, soldier, and Jewish rabbi Flavius Josephus describes the New Testament era of history as well. He describes that following the slaughter of Jesus by the Jerusalem Sanhedrin with Roman prelate Pontius Pilate as accomplice, the Flavian Augustan lineage of Caesars dedicated their rule for generations to banishing all the indigenous residents from Judea. The sack of Jerusalem was accomplished by Titus, and the second temple, built above the remains of King Solomon's original structure, was burnt to the ground. Atop the burning temple died James the Just, who some consider the elder twin brother of Jesus. The Essene community of scribes at Qumran called James the Just the righteous teacher, and Jesus they called the wicked priest. The Essenes were the banished Maccabean dynasty of kings in Jerusalem, descended from King David, who were ousted by Roman occupation. The text of the angel scroll signed by a scribe calling himself Yeshua ben Padia, meaning the Son of Righteousness, has been compared to the second book written by Enoch, the one describing the visions he had in a dream. This dream journal of Enoch is divided into three sections also. The first describes geographical locations, the second events, and the third makes astronomical observations. In the geographical section, Enoch first meets the fallen angels, called the Anunnaki in the Ethiopian version and in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Grigori in the Slavic version. They are described in his dream as eternally weeping, suspended upside down in midair with fire above and earth below, punished for the sin of copulating with the wives of men. Enoch pleads to his guardian angel guide to save them, but the angel explains they cannot be saved. The sin of these fallen angels is later explained in the astronomical portion of the dream. These angels had conspired to teach complex sciences including metallurgy and factory construction to primitive people, the mortal descendants of Seth, the third son of Adam. However, they transgressed by breeding Nephilim, half-human, half-angel offspring with mortal women. The Bible overtly compares these Nephilim hybrids of angels and mortals to the Titans, heroes of the Greek myths. In the astronomical section of the dream, cycles and patterns of alignments in time are explained to Enoch by his dream guide that constitute calendars continuously in use until at least the era of the New Testament as Jubilees by the Essenes of Qumran and that bore years of 360, not 365 days. The exact contents of the angel scroll of Yeshua ben Padi remain untranslated, 
despite its initial discovery having been announced in 1999. Meanwhile, other more recently discovered works, such as the Gospels of Philip, Thomas, and most recently Judas Iscariot himself, have attracted more media sensationalism than more important works, such as the Secret Apocryphon of John or Pistis Sophia, let alone the purely Gnostic hypostasis of the Archons. Gnosticism was a syncretic new religion arising in the Roman colonies of the Middle East in opposition to the Roman Flamines, or Colleges of Cardinals. It was known as Coptic in Lower Egypt for the hieratic alphabet of its scriptures, and the Nag Hammadi Library from Egypt during the New Testament era contains many Christian Gospels excluded from the later canonized Latin Vulgate alongside purely Gnostic works. The canonized Latin Vulgate, commissioned by Pope Clement, a title of Titus Flavius Augustus Caesar and the Flamines, included the, now excluded, Book of Maccabees and the entire works of Flavius Josephus, Caesar's adopted uncle. Some nowadays dare to speculate that Josephus was Joseph, the father of Jesus, and that James the Just was Christ's elder brother, and that Mary Magdalene of Egypt came between James and Jesus, and that this caused Josephus to switch sides to Rome, and, as Caiaphas of the Jerusalem Sanhedrin, condemn his own son Jesus to death, symbolically pledging his national allegiance to Rome. While there are many more documents from the New Testament era than were included in the King James English translation of the Bible, there have not yet been any found written by the person the New Testament calls the Messiah himself. Until now. The text of the Angel Scroll of Yeshua ben Padia represents just such a text. It has been compared to the Book of Enoch in that it describes a dream vision by the scribe led by a female angel named Panamea. Whereas Enoch's dream vision he interpreted upon awakening as an omen of the flood, it appears the dream of Yeshua ben Padia was foreseeing the sack of Jerusalem. If the angel's scroll is revealed to have been written by Jesus Christ himself, it will put a new spin on the syncretism of faiths that culminated into Christianity during the New Testament era. Not only might Jesus have been the son of Josephus and the younger brother of the Qumran community leader, James the Just, but Jesus may have been exiled from the Maccabean exiles himself prior to beginning his teachings as recorded in the Synoptic Gospels. The Angel Scroll of Yeshua ben Padia Stay tuned into benpatia.com.